Hello, I am Jen Mann, and I am the New York Times bestselling author of People I Want to Punch in the Throat. I also am an award-winning blogger, and you can find my blog at, wait for it, People I Want to Punch in the Throat.com. It's kind of a theme I have. So um, if you don't know anything about me, I, like I said before, I'm Jen. I live in Kansas City, and I am uh, I'm quarantined at home. We're under stay-at-home orders here, so I'm staying at home but I do have a very large social media platform. I have over a million followers on social media. And so I have been working really hard to make sure everybody is laughing during this time that we're all stuck at home, trying to flatten the curve during the COVID-19 uh, outbreak and to stay, stay safe and to help um, all the first responders and necessary people who are out there so that they can go do their job and we get out of their way. Because I would like to make everybody laugh and because I'm trying to look for new content, uh, when I was asked if I would read a chapter from this book uh, to be recorded and shared, I thought, oh my God, that would be a great idea. So here we are. So I'm reading a chapter from People I Want to Punch in Throat, Competitive Crafters, Drop Off Death Spots, and Other Suburban Scourges. This book is available from Ballantine uh, Penguin Random House, and the audiobook is from Tantra Media. So please go ahead and check it out, along with all my other books, if you wouldn't mind. I would love your support. Right now, everybody's looking for something funny to read. I'm your girl. Um, the little word of warning, if you don't know who I am, um, I am known as the Irma Bombeck with F-bombs. So I have a potty mouth. Like, there's just no other way to say it. I'm, I'm a cusser. I have pg the story I'm going to read to you. I may stumble a little bit because I'm trying to figure out how best to say something without, you know, making it an R-rated story. So, but I'm going to do my best to, um, to make sure that this is shareable for everybody. So, today I'm going to be reading, Would You Take Less Than a Quarter for the Swarovski Vape? <clears throat> Here we go. I love garage sailing. Yeah, I just use that as a verb. And if you are a fellow garage sale aficionado, then you understand why and you also use it as a verb. There is nothing that makes me happier than driving around town every fall and spring and seeing the neighborhood banners advertising upcoming garage sales. It's amazing what people will get rid of. You never know what you're going to find in someone's dusty garage. I've heard folklore about long lost engagement rings hidden in the lining of a handbag or a priceless copy of the Declaration of Independence pasted to the back of an old painting. But I've only ever found excellent deals on kids' soccer cleats. Still, totally exciting though. New cleats are expensive. Besides shopping at garage sales, I love hosting garage sales. Every year, my mom and I dig through our houses and find a bunch of crap, I mean really great stuff so we can sell to earn some money so we can go back out and buy some more crap. I mean, really terrific stuff that we'll use for a bit and then turn around and garage sale in a couple of years. The circle of life, suburban style. My mom and I take our garage sailing very seriously. We set up tables and clothing racks and organize our loot to look like a little store. We line the driveway with the good stuff, meant to entice people and draw them in so they'll stay a while. We work hard to get good quality buyers into our garage of goodies. There are lots and lots of nice, normal people who come to our garage sale. They look around and they compliment us on our neatness. Little do they know it's the only time of year I sweep out my garage. The quality of our merchandise, a lot of my mom's clothes still have tags on them and I sell so many designer kids clothes that I've been known to tell people I have four children instead of two. And the overall ambiance of our garage sale. We pipe in soft music on the laptop and sell cold beverages. If you squint your eyes and ignore the lawnmower and the overflowing recycling bin, you'd almost think you're at the mall. The nice, normal people always pay the asking price and never say stupid things like, I'll give you 25 bucks to take that deep freezer off your hands. Pointing to my garage freezer, plugged in and full of my family's frozen food, it is clearly marked with a sign stating that it's not for sale. Fortunately, the nice, normal people are the ones who visit often. But sometimes my mom and I host a garage sale that attracts the jackals of the world. Our last garage sale started off perfectly fine. And then the mother with a tiny tornado swooped in. Look, 
I'm not stupid. I know my number one garage sale customer is my fellow mom. Kid gear, toys, and clothes are expensive, and my garage sales are a great place to pick up some terrific deals. So I'm always happy to see a mom and her kid walk up my driveway. However, this chick was so preoccupied with pawing through my mom's pile of $3 jeans, she barely noticed that her demon spawn was running amok. Whenever I am irritated by a kid's behavior, I always try to do the passive aggressive thing to get the mom's attention. I'm not proud of it, but people are crazy when it comes to their kids. You can't just open with, hey lady, restrain your brat, would ya? You gotta finesse it. So I said, I know I'm only asking a couple of bucks for that set of Legos your son is screwing across my driveway, but now that he's lost half of the pieces, I'm worried I won't even get a quarter for it. What? She looked up from the pile of my mother's size 10 jeans that were never going to fit her size 14 butt. Trust me, lady. It's hard. Your son, he's dumping all of my Legos on the driveway. Aren't they for sale? Yes, they are. Would you like to buy them? No, we have a ton of Legos. Well then, I trailed off at this point, expecting her to do the right thing and rein in her kid, pick up the Legos and preferably leave. Because at that point, she was only looking at my mom's stuff and I wasn't gonna make any money off of her. <sighs> okay, she sighed and put down the pair of jeans she was eyeing so she could yell to her kid. Casper, put away the Legos. Casper whined. I'm just playing with them. I know, baby, but the lady doesn't want you to touch her stuff. Apparently, you can look, but you can't touch at this garage sale. Oh, no, she didn't. Did she just try to out passive, passive aggressive me? What? <laughs> I never said you can't touch the Legos. I would just prefer it if you didn't rip into the sealed box and lose half of them in my yard. I told Casper, I'd like to sell them and no one will want them if some of the pieces are missing. I want to play with them, mommy. I know, baby, the lady says no. You're absolutely right, the lady says no. But you know who else should be saying no, Casper? Your damn mother. It was around that time that Casper said, mommy, I have to go pee pee. The negligent mother looked up at that one. Oh, okay, baby. Then she turned to me, where's your bathroom? I'm sorry, what, where's my what? Oh no, oh hell no, 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 no. Are you effing kidding me, lady? I don't care if your kid wets his pants. You should have handled that mess before you left the house this morning. This is a garage sale. Do I look like I've got a public bathroom in here? Plus, you're kind of a witch. I smiled at her sweetly and replied, is that the McDonald's down the street? Before she could say anything, I was interrupted. Excuse me, do you have change for a 50? It was a well-dressed mother with a toddler on her hip and her Dolce & Gabbana sunglasses casually yet perfectly pushed up on her head to hold back her magnificent mane of highlighted hair. I'm in a bit of a hurry. She continued, motioning to the idling Lexus at the curb. I've got my baby sleeping in the car. I just wanted these things, but I don't have anything smaller than this. I looked at the items she had selected, all good Jimbery outfits with matching tights and headbands. She had about $17 worth of stuff. I wanted to say, I'm on to you, Wiley, $50 people in your racket. There are two types of $50 people. One is the Dolce mom, who really looks like all she carries around are $50 bills. The other are little old ladies who says, I just got paid and I haven't had a chance to get to the bank for anything smaller. They both come early in the morning and hope to get stuff for a song because you haven't made enough sales yet to make change for them. What's really annoying is that the $50 people always grab some of my best stuff. They say real sweetly, can you break a 50? while continuing to dig in their wallets as if they might have $17 and quarters in there. And then, like they had this great idea. Or, wait, hold on, look at that. They hold up a wad of crumpled ones that look like they've either 
been through the washing machine, or spent some time stuffed in a hooker's butt crack. I've got three dollars. If you don't have change, that's fine. I can give you the three for all this stuff. At least you're getting rid of it, right? Oh, I don't think so, Wiley $50 people. You can shove that dirty $3 back up some hooker's butt because I'm not taking that today. You can't beat me that easily. I know your tricks, and I have tricks of my own. I just went to the bank last night and got $200 in $1 bills. I can break your 50, no problem. I said, you know what? I can break your 50. Let's get you taken care of right away so you can get back to your baby. Would you like a bag for all of this? I think I even have a Gymboree one. I winked at her. Her scheme has probably worked so many times that she's been using that same $50 bill over and over again until she met me. Nothing felt better than taking her 50 out of circulation. However, one of these days, I'm going to be on the losing end because it's only a matter of time before someone slips me a counterfeit 50. After she left, I noticed we had some new shoppers. Great. But then I took a closer look and noticed the woman in the 15-year-old Christmas sweater in April, and the man with saggy trousers held up by the poorest excuse for a belt I'd ever seen. It was an enormous belt with new holes punched in it so that the tail wound round his back. Clearly, everything these two were wearing had been purchased at garage sales for a quarter or less. Tight walk. The Wiley $50 people are bad enough, but the worst people to come to my garage sale are the tightwads, the ones who try to talk you down lower than a quarter. Not only are they cheapskates, but they're simply jackholes who want to waste everyone's time. Come on, what the hell is worth less than a quarter? Nothing. If it was worth less than a quarter, it would be in the trash, not in my garage sale. If it was worth less than a quarter, then I spent more on the sticker to mark the price. Also, I won't take less than a quarter because I refuse to have nickels and dimes in my change box. I don't have any room with all my $1 bills taking up so much space. Sure enough, the man asked, will you take less than a quarter for this? He held up a crystal vase that was a wedding present. It had quite a bit of sentimental value to me. Okay, I'm lying. I think one of my coworkers gave it to us. I knew the crystal vase in the tightwad's hand wasn't Swarovski, but it was at least Macy's brand of crystal. Sure, the person who had kindly bought it for us probably used a coupon, and yes, it hadn't been in style for 30 years, but it was worth a quarter, damn it. It took all of my self-restraint to say, no, sorry, instead of, no, but I hear your mom will. Let me just stop right here and be clear that there is a difference between the tightwads and the hagglers. I am not talking about the hagglers. I don't mind the hagglers. I get it. It's a garage sale. That's half the fun. It's a rush to walk out of someone's garage with your new treasure, their old junk, and the knowledge that you spent less than a cup of coffee to get all that swag. The only way you're going to do it is if you haggle. But you've got to play the game and you've got to play it cool. You need to look like you barely even like those curtains in your hand. You have to say things like, I'm not sure. I'm not sure they're going to work in my house. I think there might be three windows in that room. I can't remember, and there are only two curtains here. Hmm, I could try them though and see. You wanted six dollars? Would you take three? See what I did there? I made your curtains seem inconsequential. You don't know that I have been searching for three months for those exact curtains, and I would probably pay $10 if you ask. Also, I didn't get all crazy with the haggle. I didn't go straight for the jerk move of $1. I kindly split your asking price in half. 50% is a good, inoffensive number. The only time a haggler riles me up is when they imply my beautiful art or knickknacks are perfect for the lake house. Sure, I'm getting rid of it, but that stuff sat on my living room mantle, and now you're going to put it next to a moose head or a stuffed fish? No, my price is always firm when I hear it's going to the lake house. The tight wad harumphed and stormed out without the crystal vase. 
I was still irritated by the old man when a lady asked, do you have a dressing room? Uh, I know I set up a nice shop, but even the dumbest person out there would never confuse my garage with Nordstrom. I wasn't clear earlier when the negligent mother asked me if I had a public restroom for her kid to violate, and now this woman wanted a dressing room? What the hell, people? I was selling $80 pants for eight bucks. I could understand my shopper's hesitancy to buy pants at 90% off retail, and I could understand her desire to know for certain the pants would fit. However, the buyer was going to have to take a bit of a risk here. He was going to have to use some common sense in this situation. First, he would pick them up and look at the brand. Was it a brand she wears on a regular basis? If it wasn't, then I could understand her concern. And if $8 for gorgeous wool flannel trousers that I got too frickin' fat to wear was too rich for her blood, then maybe she should just keep moving. If it was a brand she wore on a regular basis, then yes, she could buy with confidence. She could know that these were the pants that she normally paid $80 for, and that on this day, she could get them for eight. Only this lady didn't have pants. She had an armful of bras. When I was cleaning out my closet for the sale, I had a bin of bras that I'd set out that I was going to take to a women's shelter. And then I got too lazy and it was time to start my sale. So I shoved the bin under the table. I didn't realize that anyone would have the nerve to dig under my tables, but apparently the garage sale is the wild west and nothing is off limits. No, I don't have a dressing room, I said to her, because we're in a garage. How much are these? She asked. I was dumbfounded. Do people buy used bras? You know what? I never miss an opportunity for a sale. One dollar each, I said. I heard my mother gasp. She knew it isn't cheap to harness my tatas. I was giving those suckers away. I was going to donate them anyway. It'll save me a trip to the shelter if she'll buy them, I whispered to my mother. Because yeah, I'm a real philanthropist. Hmm, the bra lady hesitated. A dollar each? I don't know. There's nowhere I could try them on? No, not for bras that I'm selling for a dollar. If you want, you could probably make a spot back there behind my kids' sleds. Surprisingly, the bra lady decided not to buy the bras, so the shelter got them anyway. I am a giver. Around midday is when the old married couples come out. They walk through like they have all the time in the world. They hold hands and survey our wares like they're archaeologists looking through touch treasure. They pick up everything and inspect it. They tisk tisk over the imaginary flaws they find and put it back on the table. Sometimes I offer helpfully, that's real crystal. It was a wedding gift from my boss. It just like Swarovski and only a quarter. After shaking their heads at my meager assortment of crap, they give a little wave and walk back to their sedan and move on to the next sale. Midday also brings out the nuts. There's a guy who wants to know if I have any real gold or silver that he could melt down into ingots because soon our financial system will crash and all trading will be done in ingots. I was sorry that I didn't have any precious metals to sell him because I would have loved to hear what his idea of a fair price would be for a 24 karat gold necklace. I know what mine is and it isn't a quarter. After the alchemist comes the real crazy one. You got any guns? A guy called from the end of my driveway, not even bothering to come any closer in case my answer was no. I realized that I live in Kansas where hunting is a popular pastime, but come on, this is the suburbs. I have never been to a garage sale where Colt, 45 are, are, where Colt 45s are displayed in a shoebox next to another box full of discarded tools. No one just has a shotgun casually leaning up against the wall with a sticker that says, make offer. Yet at every garage sale I host, there is always one guy, never the same guy, who casually asks for guns. I sputtered, you mean for sale or to protect myself out here? He replied, for sale, of course, it's a garage sale, yeah? Yeah, it's a garage sale, all right, not a gun show. Is, is, is it even legal to sell guns out of my garage? Are my neighbors doing that? Oh, actually, don't tell me. I don't want to know. 
At the end of the day, we noticed that we'd been robbed. We weren't surprised. Something always gets stolen, it's just the way it goes. It's strange because I don't mind when it's an adult. The adults always steal necessities. Look, if there is someone out there who is in such a desperate situation that they can't pay me two bucks for my kids' used tennis shoes and feel like they need to steal them, then there isn't much I can say except God bless and good luck. In fact, if that person who, swiped the toddler, who had swiped the toddler tennis had told me their story, I would have bagged up every outfit I had in their kids' sizes and all of the children's books and give it to them for free. Now, the criminals that drive me absolutely crazy are the kids. As we were closing up for the day, we had a toddler whose mother put a Dora the Explorer backpack on her to wear around while she shopped. In the end, the mother didn't buy anything and they started to leave. I saw my backpack walking down the driveway and I was torn. Was I really going to chase down a toddler for two bucks or was I gonna let it go? I almost let it go. But then, when they were all the way down at the end of the driveway, the mother noticed the backpack. She glanced back to see if I'd noticed or if they could just keep walking, real casual-like. We made eye contact, though, and she had to admit her kids swiped my goods. <laughs> Oops. Marguerite really loves Dora, she called. Looks like it, I called back. Do you mind? She called, gesturing at the adorable Marguerite and her big, bad eyes. Of course I don't mind you buying my stuff, I called. That's what garage sales are for. That one's two dollars. They walked up the driveway so I could get a better look at just how cute Marguerite looked at the back looked in the backpack. I'm sorry, Marguerite, the woman said, but the lady won't let you have the backpack. Of course I will, for two dollars. They stood there watching me. Marguerite was about to cry. And the woman was giving me a look that said, really lady, you're gonna make my kid cry for a lousy two bucks? And I was giving her a look that said, no, you're going to make your kid cry for a lousy two bucks. She wouldn't take the backpack off her kid and they just stood there staring me down. I was starting to feel uncomfortable and I, and I could tell my will was about to break. I was gonna give the kid the damn backpack. But then I resolved to stand strong. This woman was a jerk and I didn't have any patience left. I was tired of listening to the passive parents who paraded through my garage and apologized to their kids because I asked them to be responsible. Screw her. If she wasn't gonna teach her kid, then I would. I leaned down and I said, sorry, Marguerite, you can't have the backpack for free. It's $2. And the mother said, do you have change for a 50? And that is the end of my story. You can find that story and more in this book, People I Want to Punch in the Throat, Competitive Crafters, Drop Off Death Spots, and Other Suburban Scourges. Thank you to Valentine and to Tanter for giving me permission to read this story. Uh, please feel free to share it. Just tag all of us and let us know if you enjoyed it. And if you didn't enjoy it, I would just keep that to yourself. I'm not everybody's cup of tea, but I just I don't care to hear about it. So. <laughs> So yes, but if you did love it, I love to hear that and find me everywhere on social media. I would love to chat and uh, wash your hands and stay safe. Goodbye.